I'm Bridget Fettesy, and this is your Dumpster Fire for the week of March 6th to March 12th. And the unicorns dance while the world burns, world burns, world burns. And the unicorns dance while the world burns. I mean, we really were way ahead of our time with that one. I know, right? (laughs) That one was just an off-the-cuff little jingle you started dancing. And now it's like, yeah, the world is burning. Uh, Before we get going, we'd like to thank you, our subscribers and viewers. If you want to see the unedited version of Dumpster Fire, you can go to Fetacy.com and join us. Subscribe. You get the unedited version every Sunday of this show show here and we hear you people in the comments who are disappointed in all of the ads they're getting on this free content so we've decided to offer you loyal viewers the opportunity to subscribe and get the finished version with no ads ad free every Monday it will drop at the same time behind a paywall and that way you can contribute to your favorite show and not have to be watching it with commercials (laughs) <laughs> See, we hear the people. Problem solved. Problem solved. Yeah. Or you can get your free ash. Shut the f- up. <laughs> your move, commenters. <laughs> Balls in your court. <laughs> like, what do you think? We're, how are we going to make money doing this? I hate you people. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just a bunch of ads now on, as I jerk off to my free content online. Uh, By the way, I have zero f- to give because I'm eight and a half months pregnant. So we have the the crew, but minus Sam, she's still gone, but she will be back for the next one if we do a next one. <laughs> She'll be back in time for us to never do a dumpster fire again. <laughs> and then you can have your spinoff show that you've all been desiring. And it will be Dave and Sam's conspiracy corner. In- Doing infolds wars. Infolds wars. <laughs> I mean, yeah. hey, look, that is the goal, right? Mm-hmm. To be like Oprah and just start producing other people. Start making other <laughs> shows that don't require yeah. you. <laughs> I'll be in there breastfeeding. <laughs> Trust me, these are some big flaps and folds to fill. So <laughs> I'm doing my best over here. <laughs> I don't know if that's a flattering statement or not. <laughs> Depends on who you're talking to. <laughs> we have Luna. Hello, Luna. Hello. She's here doing the makeup. She's a genius. We also have Maggie. Hello. Maggie in the house. And Dave Yates. Hey, everybody. Spilling in for the flaps and folds and giving my husband a wedding present. He's very grateful. (laughs) Yeah. He just looks so happy putting together all the jumpers and strollers. (laughs) He's like, I don't have to be on this fucking maniac show. You can still get our women sweatshirt, um, our women jumper, as they say, in other parts of the world. Women! 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 It's still available. It will be available for the rest of the month as we segue out of Women's History Month and into the patriarchy always wins. <laughs> and then we have some of last week's comments. But before we read these comments, just remember to like, subscribe, and comment, and touch our bells and buttons, and tell your friends, because that's the only way anyone will ever hear of us is word of mouth. Right. Touch Bridget's growing bells and buttons. (laughs) (laughs) And we would like to say, too, thank you for all the nice comments. Everyone gave nice comments to Bridget, and I was reading them, and I was like, you should just go read the comments. Because I never read the comments. Which is something I never tell her to do. (laughs) Because they were all just very nice, and it was a really big boost, and she really needed it. So It did. It got me through this week and doing this episode, because most weeks, I'm like, why am I doing this? (laughs) Yeah, they were really sweet. Yeah, we had some, I mean, too many to read, and we really appreciate all the love, so thank you. Thank you. And we had some, just a few I selected to read. MM said, damn, that hot sauce dude has some good quips. Yay. And also Dan D said, Dave's ha ha hot sauce is the bomb. Thank you, Dan D. Yeah, it is. And then I got schooled by some people. Maggie got roasted, (laughs) which was great. Several people told me this, but Luke Salazar, D&D is not a board game. (laughs) And then we know. Neil or Maggie, D&D is not a board game. 
How dare you? Maggie? What's so funny is that when she said it, when we were filming, I was like, I know it's not a board game, but I don't even want to like bother. And then in my brain, I was like, she's going to, I don't even know what makes it usually. Uh, so I'm like, it probably won't even make it to the final. And then when I saw people roasting her, I was like, that's hilarious. She likes to claim she thought about it. Oh, I definitely did because my husband has roasted me for calling it a board calling game. It a board game. So oh, now I know. All I have to go on is uh, Stranger Things. Which I was like, that's my only reference to Dungeons and Dragons. What is it? Tabletop? A yeah, tabletop, a tabletop game. game. Okay. Yes. Yeah, Maggie's that's getting acceptable. it from all 12 sides of the die. Uh huh. <laughs> okay. Then we had Tori Moore said, also, would 10,000% love, love, love a How to Be the Unicorn in a Dumpster Fire series where Luna does Bridget's makeup? I would watch the f out of that. Ooh. Yeah. So we might need to do something like that, maybe behind the paywall as well. Get your mind around it, Luna. Luna doesn't like being on camera either. Luna says she'll think about it, guys. Uh -huh. Then we have Sharp52312 said, Bridget Phetasy is the only woman on TV YouTube more trustworthy than Mexican weather ladies. <laughs> <laughs> That's a bold statement. That's a bold that statement. That is a bold statement. And John B, I think, is the winner with Did Mr. Phetasy Run Off with Elon <laughs> Musk this week? I noticed they were both missing. <laughs> yes, I lost my husband to a cardboard cutout. <laughs> Ah, it would be the perfect end. Happens in this town all the time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Thank you guys again. It really did warm my heart, and I read most of the comments and saw all the nice things you said. And I will remember to reference that episode when I'm feeling, like, overwhelmed, or what am I doing, or why are we doing this, or mm. is it worth it? Is it worth it? <laughs> Meh. <laughs> every week, every week, that's the question. Is it worth it? Canceled. Canceled. Actually, this is canceled slash Parade of Morons. It's a crossover event. Yes, this is the crossover event of the season you've all been waiting for. <laughs> Everything Russian is being canceled. It's like Red red Scare Hysteria. Uh-huh. It's so crazy, but it's... It's not just the corporations backing out of Russia. We're not talking about the big sanctions, the governments, the banks and businesses. No, we're talking we're about talking stupid about <laughs> Stupid Americans who are canceling their restaurant, like reservations at Russian restaurants. And Canadians. Right, and Canadians. <laughs> and so Canadians. I'll just read a bunch of these. French Canadian restaurant Maison de la Poutine. House of Poutine receives <laughs> threats because its name contains poutine, which is similar to Putin. <laughs> um, Russian restaurants in the U.S. are being hit by cancellations and bad reviews. Russian businesses overall are facing adversity and discrimination. Tchaikovsky is now canceled. <laughs> there was a orchestra that was going to play a whole series of Tchaikovsky, a night event thing, and they canceled that. They were like, due to the circumstances. Like, are we gonna? Are we going to ban... Dostoevsky, you know, are we going to just like get rid of yeah. all the Russian writers? Just start burning Dostoevsky. <laughs> Don't you understand, too, that most of the people that came from Russia to start restaurants here in America, like, were escaping a lot of this stuff? <laughs> <laughs> Didn't want to live in Russia I anymore. I feel like you're not really understanding the reason a lot of these people emigrated. It just, it's... It's so crazy to me, too, because, like, the I don't know where it's coming from. Like, is this, like, five people? I or is this, is it coming from the left? I mean, the right probably never went to Russian restaurants anyway, let's be real. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but where is it coming from? I think it's just the general overall sense of Russian, stay away, you know, like. This is so, like, this is the new Red Scare. Yeah, it's like when... The whole freedom fries things when yeah. we want got rid of French fries and we started saying freedom fries. That's yeah. the stupidest shit in the world. Yeah, but there's so much xenophobia too because there was like the freedom fries thing, but then they were also like Dave was saying in the writers' room, just like an overall hatred towards brown yeah. people. Yeah, nine eleven. It was like anybody who's brown, boo. We're all united <laughs> in America. I, I remember I was I was in high school and people were putting American flags on their Pontiac Grand Ams and we are America. Yeah, it was like one minute. Unless you're a brown person. Wow. That, that was what yeah. it was. And be, people forget that like, oh yeah, we were unified then unless you were brown. Mm -hmm. And like I'm seeing people like trying to bolster America by saying, we're going after the Ruskies. Ruskies? Or Rusky? Well, the Ruskies? Ruskies? Yeah, Ruskies. <laughs> the Ruskies. <laughs> well, boys, I reckon this is it. 
nuclear combat toe to toe with the Ruskies. I like Rusty. It's like you dorks are trying to cancel Tchaikovsky, whose all his music is public domain anyways, because <laughs> yeah. he's from 200 years ago. I yeah. don't think he's a supporter of Putin. Yeah. It seems so silly, too, and it also feels a lot like virtue, just a reason to like do something meaningful in this moment like they don't they don't have it i don't know they're like i don't know what to do when i feel helpless and it is weird like watch this you're watching war on social media and seeing all these disturbing videos and then you're like i don't know what to do let's make a reservation at a russian place and then cancel it you know (laughs) like i'm going on yelp to leave a mean review one star we're gonna try to get victor fired from his from his job there was also the 20-year-old Russian pianist who was supposed to perform three times this week in Canada, but his performances were canceled even after he condemned Russia's invasion. Well, and by the way, a lot of these people who are Russian, like, they have family there. They can't just be openly condemning Putin on a global stage. They'll get their family killed or disappeared. Uh-huh. So to, even to be asking that of people is just, like, very McCarthy-esque times. It's very strange it's like a competition to see who can oppose the war in the dumbest fashion possible. And since when did anybody oppose French fries with gravy? <laughs> Just what poutine is. <laughs> McDonald's French fries and KFC gravy. The French call this poutine. That just seems on its face ridiculous. Yeah. And cheese on top. Yeah. It's Any the most- American that doesn't know about poutine, it's insane <laughs> to me because it's like America covered in freedom sprinkled with democracy. <laughs> there was a great meme going around that was like, Trump's going to cause World War Three, And then in 2020, in 2020, whatever. And then it's like. We need to start World War Three in 2022. And like that is a little bit of the schizophrenia that I'm experiencing. And that's why I'm like, I don't know where this is coming from. Is it coming from the left? And if it is, like all these people hate America so much. There's so much anti-American sentiment in that faction of America. Wouldn't you be like rushing to go live in Russia where there's no American culture? <laughs> Like, wouldn't you be excited? Like, no more McDonald's. Wouldn't you be lining up to get into this place where there's no joy and no McDonald's? And no jokes to hurt your feelings (laughs) because comedy is canceled. (laughs) I mean, this sounds like exactly the future that the leftists want. Right. And a failed communist state. (laughs) And bread lines. Uh, okay, then we have what is happening. Someone made the cringiest video of support for Ukraine ever. Every one of these iterations of this is cringe. Yes. The Avengers Endgame. Memes are becoming movies now. Yeah. But they have, what's funny about this is why do they have like the EU and NATO and all of these like world leaders who are yes they're sanctioning them but they're not like mostly it should just be like Zelensky has aids and like some old ukrainian ladies with sunflower seeds and, and molotov, like, molotov cocktails, molotov cocktails <laughs> and local gorillas who stayed home to fight taking out some freaking tanks and it's the ukrainian people essentially russian protesters we can leave them in there but all these other, I'm like, you shouldn't be giving all these other countries like credit in this. I know. I feel like it was kind of a like a, a best a case scenario, cry. like a yeah, a rallying cry. Like this is what it would look like if we all came together and what and supported but, Ukraine and started World War Three. Yeah, apparently, started World War Three. <laughs> like it's it's so stupid. They're so out of touch as well. If you notice in that video, they superimposed white people's faces over the the people from Black Panther. <laughs> It's like how 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 dense are you that maybe don't maybe just don't do that. Uh-huh. We should cancel them. It just doesn't really hold up either. I'm like they all got together and fought and that's not ex- what's happening here at all. It's all of us kind of watching. you know watching on social media and and hoping things don't get worse and trying not to escalate while we try to do things. It's not this though. Ding ding ding. Then we have the BDE award. These women of Ukraine. <laughs> this is a badass video. 
Yeah. All of this that they just said translates to we're going to break your dicks off. That's all <laughs> That's all I got from this video. Was not there a line like we will shoot you like a rabid dog or put you down <laughs> like a rabid dog or something? <laughs> this is the the funny thing is that we really love propaganda here on Dumb Survivor. <laughs> like, <laughs> we were I'll be the first to admit we were definitely on board with the Russian propaganda when they put out their whole like Russian soldier video and now they're getting their butts whooped in Ukraine allegedly and so I'm not sure how true that was and then everybody was like see you don't need to be a strong propagandist you can have the rainbow flags and gays in your army and still be tough and I'm like yeah but the point of propaganda is to be scary (laughs) these women really illustrate that (laughs) (laughs) They do a good job. Of it. There's a whole jihadi vibe to this that I I'm really feeling it's from them. Kind of terrifying. Yes. Yeah. It's a little bit like we will come for your. Yeah, they have. I'll put they a have jihad really, on you because I'll put a jihad on you too. You know? They have really big uh, key your soul energy going. Yeah, on. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Get these women some sheath underwear. They're like, we have secured our children. We will fight by our husbands. I'd be like, I'm gonna be in the bunker watching Netflix with our baby. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get them some sheath underwear for their giant balls. Oh man. Moving on to women. A bill in Missouri would make it illegal to get an abortion if the patient has an ectopic pregnancy, and they're also trying to make it illegal to leave the state to get an abortion. It's funny because Republicans don't seem, and I was talking to somebody at lunch the other day about this, about these stupid abortion bills and how insane they are. And he said something that's really stuck with me. Like, Republicans don't understand. Don't interrupt your enemy when they're making a mistake. Yeah. And so they seem to be putting these, like, extreme bills out. And you're like, you guys are, you are, by all the polls, you'll crush in 2022 and during, in the elections. And the only thing you could do that would make people kind of pause is start getting crazy around the social issues and particularly around abortion, which like 70% of Americans are on board with at least within the first three months. Yeah. And so you're going to start getting crazy about this. But not only that, I don't want to hear from ever again from a Republican or conservative who's all about small government and federalism if you're supporting bounty hunting people who leave the state to go get an abortion. Where it's legal in another state. Yeah. Why don't you just gut the whole freaking concept of federalism while you're at it? You're all full. This goes back to my thing, like everyone's full of shit. Right. Everyone's fine with big government when it's their thing. We're seeing this with abortion and we've seen it with the mandates. I don't like it when government has corporations and citizens doing their dirty work for them. Which is what's happening. So they can't push this through because it's unconstitutional, some of these laws, whether it's mandates or these extreme anti-abortion law bans. And so then they have private citizens. They're like, oh, well, we can have private citizens report people and report corporations. And they, they do the same thing with the mask mandates. Yeah. It's insanity. Yeah. And it should be a rule that any man, like, we looked up the guy who made this insane rule. The ectopic pregnancy The ectopic one. pregnancy one, which, by the way, an ectopic pregnancy is not a viable pregnancy. It's a medical emergency. It will so kill you. It will kill you. It will blow. I had one. It's if, a suicide yeah. bomber. That's <laughs> what it is. It will take you out. It's like, if I can't live, you can't live either. It's dangerous, and you will die. And... To act like you don't know this and that you have to get an abortion to take care of this just shows you know absolutely nothing about reproduction at all. This guy obviously hasn't been near a vagina just based on Dave's research. (laughs) Yeah, it looks, you shouldn't be able to make laws about women's reproductive health if you and your wife sleep in separate twin beds in the same room like it's the 1950s. (laughs) Yeah, just if you call your wife mother. It's like, it, and this is a country founded on mobster movies where being a narc was the worst thing you can be. Being a rat was the worst thing you can be. I got this rat, this annoying, cheating f- rat. 
And now these politicians are like, oh, yeah, be a narc. Yeah. Be a narc. Oh, but- yeah. America is great at crowdsourcing big government. That's all they're doing now. Yeah. This is bullshit. No, it's ridiculous. That like out of state law is bananas. That's crazy. Like, isn't this in America? Like, what are you doing? Same thing with the the like the ectopic one. You're just a moron. No. Moron. 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 <laughs> <clears throat> yeah, it's weird. I'm not for it. And when people accuse me of being a Republican or a conservative, I'm like, get fucked. And when you ask me why I could never, when people say, oh, you're right wing, I'm like, no, I'm not. Find another person to fill your like weird agenda, but it's not me. And here's someone else who takes hits from both sides. J.K. Rowling <laughs> had the perfect response to someone telling her to sit down and shut up on International Women's Day. Yeah, she's so fucking my hero. I mean... She's such a badass. She really is. She's willing to like die on the hill that I'm willing to die on. And she has some, you know, she's got a lot more to lose. Yeah. Yeah. So it was this guy, Vosh or whatever. Vosh. I don't even know how to say it. He's a like left wing person online. Because she tweeted something about International Women's Day. And he said all JK Rowling had to do was shut the up and she could have been almost uncritically beloved for like a century and he said women be quieter and start apologizing challenge here's an idea misogynist disguised as male feminist shut the up challenge <laughs> there it is <laughs> basically his his tweet women be quieter and start apologizing challenge is is the equivalent to get back in hogwarts kitchen and bring me a butterbeer bitch <laughs> <laughs> it's so true I've never been more turfy than every single day of my pregnancy, and I'm really grateful to have my warrior and queen, J.K. Rowling, out there fighting for me because she's just not taking it. She's going, she's she's on Twitter a lot. She gives no f***s. No. It's amazing. And, I mean, she... In her tweet, she was talking about how she had a violent ex-husband who used to tell her life would be great if only I'd comply. And then people were like, oh, way to like complain about being a victim. And like it, the comments are unbelievable yeah, that no. she gets. And it's just she just refuses to back down. I have so much respect for her. And all these people who loved and worshipped her and have these like Harry Potter tattoos there, there was somebody on Twitter just last week talking about how it's it, that it's now the equivalent of basically having like a swastika tattoo, uh-huh. like any kind of like Hogwarts tattoo. It's so stupid too. It's so stupid. It's all just like taken out of context, misconstrued, and every she was painted as a transphobe, and now that's everyone thinks that's what she is, and she is not. And there are plenty of people in the trans community, like Buck Angel and many others, who come out and are like, we're not a monolith. By the way, you guys don't speak for us. Not all of us agree that there aren't, like, biological differences between the sexes. Right. And Buck Angel was like, she's a friend of mine. And I love how the, the whole idea that if you talk about women or use that word as transphobic is so like deeply misogynistic. I know. Well, There's so much misogyny <laughs> in, in, embedded in that. I can't even get my mind around it. I know. Women is like a hate word now. Yeah. <laughs> like women is hate speech. I oh, just, okay. Well, Tulsi Gabbard got it too because she got attacked for a tweet about about women on International Women's Day. She said the most important thing to appreciate on International Women's Day is that there is such a thing as women that are biologically different from men. It's not politically correct or woke to point this out, but unless we accept it, it's not possible to celebrate women. Women! Women! And she was just getting, like, people were going after her and someone was like, Women's Day should not be celebrated. (laughs) (laughs) Someone said, you never miss an opportunity to take an unnecessary jab at trans people. And this is not a Women's Day post. It's a hate day post. Oh, my God. I mean, the level of insanity and hatred and just mental illness on uh, it, around this topic is mind-boggling to me. How did we get to the place that it is mainstreamed now in society, mainstreamed, that if you say men and women are different, you're a bigot? And it's actually incredible how fast it's become mainstreamed. Yeah. Because we were saying, people were saying like three years ago, oh, this is just online, this is just fringe. You're just taking the fringe. And now it's like everywhere. Just like white supremacists. (laughs) (laughs) And pedophiles. (laughs) And pedophiles, apparently. (laughs) Tax the rich. Celebrities are okay paying high gas prices. This could have easily been breaking Bridget because 
I really do believe that the separation between the media and entertainment and the peep, the like average person is so the chasm between these two groups is so large that it's actually eroding at our entire society. Mm hmm. Which is weird to me, too, because it's most people in entertainment didn't start out rich. They started out like our broke asses. Uh-huh. Just selling hot sauce on the side of the road. <laughs> <laughs> Just making a stupid show in a not air-conditioned garage. Right. And they don't know. They usually send someone to go get their car filled up. They're not looking. Right. They don't. They have no idea. No. They're like, listen, nerds, just ride your bikes. Yeah, they're so. It's the condescension that drives me crazy, and also it is. It does have the whole sensibility of the like, it's a banana, Michael. What does it cost? Ten dollars. <laughs> I mean, it's one banana, Michael. What could it cost? Ten dollars. You just so detached from rea- from any kind of reality that people are experiencing. And as usual, as we're always harping on on this show, who does this hurt the most? Poors. Yeah. They're doing all the driving around. Right. And they're paying for this. It's not like rich people are driving to and from the f-ing valley so they can go schlep from like other people's kids around and clean other people's houses and like do everyone's dirty work. And they're like, what? who cares if I have to pay more for gas? I haven't left my house in like a month. <laughs> I haven't left my house in three years. I'm willing to pay $4 a gallon. Hell, I'll pay $15 a gallon because I drive a Tesla. Oh, would you? Would you, Stephen Colbert? You would pay fifteen dollars a gallon for gas. Of course, you would. You were seventy-five million dollars. Oh, okay, <laughs> Bette Midler. Way to try and pull on our heartstrings. I'd happily pay more gas for her. It's so emotionally manipulative too, because I think most Americans are willing to pay more for to to in support of Ukraine. But this weird thing that they're doing now is, I've been calling it conflation, where they're trying to conflate. Like the high gas prices and inflation, and they're calling it the administration itself is con- blaming it on Putin. You may have noticed this week that your gas prices have gone up. I want to talk to you a little bit about why. A lot of it has to do with Vladimir Putin. Yeah. Like, how f-ing dumb do you think we are? Those stickers that were like, thanks, this is, I did this, the Joe Biden ones. Uh-huh. I saw those in LA back in November. Yeah. LA. Yeah. <laughs> Like, not in Arizona. When I went home, and they were like, this started in January. When I went home in December, I had talked about how gas had hit over $5 like two months before. Yeah. And my parents were like, what? And I was like, yeah, this is not. No, it's not something that just started magically at the beginning of March. Yeah. They're like, this is Putin's problem. Like, oh, isn't that convenient? You get to blame this on a war. And then just as it's insulting to Americans. And it is getting to the point where it's like Teslas are a human right. We're going to be hearing this. <laughs> I, I have a proposition that if your net worth is over a million dollars, you should not get to use social media. Leave social media to the poor. <laughs> Let us complain on social media. That's all we have, Bette Midler. I know. Is that telling us not to complain. That's like I don't understand billionaires on social media at all. My goal in entertainment is just to get famous enough where I don't have to use social media. That was media. one of my first tweets ever that went did well in 2013. I was like, I just want to get rich enough to not have to be on Twitter. Uh huh. That was my only goal in life. And I see all these rich people like, why? Other than J.K. Rowling, she's allowed to be there because she's fighting a fight. Yes. Agreed. We'll, we will allow a billionaire named J.K. Rowling on. <laughs> she is our queen and she is fighting for we'll us. We'll allow it. We need like a poster of her somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> My nemesis is at it again. And by at it again, I mean impregnating women all over the world. <laughs> and this time, Grimes. Well, not Grimes, but he and Grimes had a baby to get another baby together. They welcomed a daughter named. Exa Dark <laughs> Sidreal Musk, aka they're, they're so call- annoying. They're calling her Y. <laughs> they're so annoying. And they had this baby in December via surrogate and kept it a secret. Better fantasy theory is that he's trying to Tesla with the names and spell sexy out. <laughs> I like it. I think it's a good theory. I don't know. I I don't understand. 
I, I, I don't understand. And he, she was saying they need to train it. Well, she was saying, one of her quotes from this article was, the best situation here is me training the girl and Musk training the boy. Wow, gender stereotypes. Am I right, guys? <laughs> Jeez Louise. Training it for what? The end times? Because that's what names like your kids' names signify. We are at the end of days <laughs> when you're naming your children. Yeah, it means like dark matter or something, and it's from Lord of the Rings. Or There are just several different meanings to the the dark is in reference to dark matter. Sidrail is some sort of Lord of the Rings reference. Nerd. Exa, oh, Exa is some sort of math <laughs> thing or something. I don't even know. They basically gave birth to a PlayStation 5 <laughs> exclusive game. <laughs> they also, they split up in September had the baby in December, kept it a secret, and but they also hope to have more children. And now she's with Chelsea Manning. Oh, Lord. Yes. She's dating Chelsea Manning because she needed to find someone more annoying than Elon. <laughs> <laughs> and yes. I think she succeeded. I think she has succeeded. And she was doing an interview, and they heard the, the baby, baby cry, cry over Zoom, and then the interviewer was like, wait, do you have another baby? He's like, and then I had to ask the most awkward question of my entire profession. <laughs> do you have a baby, Grimes? <laughs> and she was like, um, well, you know, we're we're keeping that private. Um, I don't understand. These people are... I don't want to be rich. I don't want to be rich and famous, because... These people are all out of their minds, weirdos, freak shows. <laughs> Agreed. Well, that, <laughs> that makes the comment that we had from last episode make more sense that Elon's a single man now. <laughs> he can go date Mr. Fetacy if he wants to. <laughs> <laughs> and now let's hear from Susana Almeida for the weather report in Mexico. Gracias, niño. Exactamente así continuará el clima esta semana. Súper despejado. Vemos las condiciones en la ciudad de Guadalajara. Los próximos días, las mañanas continúan siendo de 16 y 17 grados. If you liked that, like, subscribe, and comment. Touch my bells and buttons. And you missed the little dance I did with Elon. So if you're interested in the behind the paywall content, subscribe here if you're on Rumble at Locals, and if not, go to Fetacy.com. It keeps getting juicier. <laughs> Jussie Smollett was sentenced to 150 days in jail for lying to police in a hate crime hoax. The weirdest thing about this was that he kept yelling, I I'm not suicidal. <laughs> He's like, I'm not suicidal. I'm not suicidal. I'm not suicidal. I'm not suicidal. I am not suicidal. I am innocent, and I am not suicidal. I am not suicidal. This man is a... I think so sociopathic narcissist or has some kind of personality disorder. But more importantly, why does Juicy think Hillary Clinton has it out for him? <laughs> hmm? Really makes you wonder. Wait for the meme, Jesse Smollett didn't kill himself is coming. <laughs> I know, well, he thinks he's important enough that someone's going to like take him out in prison and I don't fake a know, suicide. Or, like, or he's going to get killed. Yeah, I don't. or he's going to kill himself. And I don't understand. Well, it would be to fake his suicide, which would mean that there's some sort of conspiracy going on around him. Breaking news, there were boys on Epstein Island. <laughs> cool science shit. <laughs> this story. Ernest Shackleton's ship, the Endurance, has been found in Antarctica. This is so cool. The way they found it's cool. If you don't know anything about this story, I'll link to the 45-minute documentary that I watched on YouTube about it because it's f***ing unbelievable. No one died. Yeah. They were stranded in the South Pole for freaking like 17 months and no one died died that's people insane. died taking selfies <laughs> <laughs> people died doing tiktok challenges <laughs> milk crate challenges more people died during january 6th than died during the shackleton expedition <laughs> <laughs> like how oh, i guess they didn't have soy at the turn of the century huh. they were eating blubber no soy boys back then this is when men were men that's right. If this was Bezos' super yacht, everyone would be dead already. <laughs> After one month, once they got stranded, like it keeps getting worse. It just keeps 
The story is so crazy. It just keeps getting worse. Even when they take their little rowboat, like 800 rescue boat that they j- jerry-rigged to sailboat to like go try and get help from the one whaling town right. that was nearby 800 kilometers away. Across a like treacherous they hit sea. A f- like a hurricane <laughs> the last day when they could see land. I was like... Uh, I don't get it. I got to watch this documentary. It's so crazy, guys. <laughs> it's the coolest story. I love stories like this because, my God, the resilience. Yeah. And the the images of the ship are really cool because it's, like, perfectly preserved because it's been in the cold water. They were in that freezing cold. Ro- I mean, you have to watch the story. It's so cool. It really is inspiring. And it makes you realize what retards we all are. <laughs> <laughs> what a bunch of pussies yeah i'm gonna make it like three days into the apocalypse (laughs) maybe all right then we have dumpster diving what's next in the dumpster Ah, i got stuck to my lips (laughs) (laughs) half of u.s adults were exposed to harmful lead levels as kids i know and it's like cut off at 81 so 1981 yeah 1981 So Dave's safe. I'm fine. 86, (laughs) baby. Yeah. Dave's safe. Luna was not from the U.S. It's you and I. Yep. This explains the high levels of retardation. (laughs) This is why we call ourselves retards galore. (laughs) It explains the high levels of retardation in America right now. It explains the morons. What was it from? The unleaded gas or the leaded gas? The leaded gas. The gas was so much better to huff in the 80s. Yes, it was. It smelled so much better back then when I was a kid than it does now. I know. I remember sitting in the car, like, <laughs> deeply inhaling when my parents were pumping gas, being like, I really like that smell. In the, like, <laughs> big station wagon. Yeah. I know. I have memories like that, too. And that explains a lot, folks. A diamond ring made from ranch dressing for sale on eBay. AKA most hillbilly sh- that was ever created. <laughs> They made it out of the bottle. <laughs> Apparently, you can compress all kinds of things and turn them into diamonds. Really? I wonder I was if it still tastes like worked. ranch dressing. Like, just, <laughs> baby, when you think of me, just lick your <laughs> wedding ring and taste that sweet hidden valley that'll remind you of our first date. You can tell by looking at it that it's, uh, it's the hidden valley. Classic. Kind of hard to improve on the original, isn't it? <laughs> you just catch a whiff of ranch <laughs> everywhere you go. <laughs> It's so weird. Anybody, wear, I don't anybody wearing a ranch dressing wedding ring has definitely drank ranch dressing out of a straw at some point. In oh life. God! <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's really just a random story that I came across last night. I'm like, this seems like a dumpster fire story. Then we have okay, this was the best headline ever written by man. A snake is eyed as the culprit in man's death until cops realize it can't pull a trigger. I just love whoever wrote that headline. <laughs> God bless you. For your wit and humor. <laughs> you sent it and Better Fantasy was like, that's ableist. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but technically, I think it's speciesist. Species. Actually, <laughs> it's speciesist. They thought he was bitten by a snake and then they rolled him over and he was shot eight times. Yeah, because they were just freaking out about the snakes everywhere because it was like a snake compound. Right. But the snakes <laughs> were in cages. They didn't know, though. They thought one was on the well, loose. One poisonous one was out there. Yeah. So I just imagine all these cops like. <laughs> then we have ancient Japanese killing stone said to contain a demon has now cracked open. <laughs> Luna <laughs> didn't know about this. <laughs> I bet this is what they the, all those like teenagers who are collecting the, the the different swords and stuff that they were finding that like assembly of Avenger teens. Uh huh. This is probably why they were assembled. <laughs> to fight the demon. Yeah, to fight the Japanese demon. I just loved it. Sam sent this to us, and she was just like underneath it. She was like, oh, great. <laughs> we, we've reached rock demon. That's that's the level of, of, of dumpster, dumpster fire. fire that we're in. And, and the surprising thing to me is nobody had a Pokeball on hand to stop this thing. <laughs> that's a nerd is joke. That- <laughs> I don't know if that's a nerd joke or a Japanese joke or both. I'm I'm, I'm, I'm operating on two different levels here, guys. Okay. And I'm gonna hear it in the comments for calling it a nerd joke. That's right. If we if our loyal fans are are correcting Maggie on Dungeons and Dragons not being a board game, they are definitely gonna appreciate a Pokeball joke. <laughs> I was like, what's a Pokeball? I know I didn't get it when Dave said Dave's it. Dave's like, night. trust me, it's gonna hit, Bridget. <laughs> I was like, I don't get it. 
<laughs> we're not really nerds. We're really just losers. <laughs> yeah, giant, giant. Yeah, we're not losers. cool. We're not cool enough to be nerds. Yeah, breaking Bridget. The tech, big tech overreach heats up. All right, I could go off about this, but it's pretty ridiculous. And YouTube is censoring all kinds of content. They're censoring pretty much anyone, which we've been warning about, which is which is funny, is that if you are on like the right wing, if you're in the right wing media or if you're even paying attention to right wing media, you've been seeing the writing on the wall for this for a long time. We've been screaming about it for a long time. If they're banning people that they don't agree with, why won't they start doing this with left wing activists? And now you're seeing them ban entire News organizations like RT, they took their to- entire U.S. channel down. They're banning entire people um, who have massive bodies of work like Abby Martin, Lee Camp. Both Abby and Lee are taking on a lot of the United States imperialism. They have a lot of issues with it. I don't necessarily agree with everything they say, but I really appreciate their perspective and their point of view and think it's very important. And now anyone who's challenging that narrative is having their entire body of work disappeared off YouTube. And I'm like, what did you guys think was going to happen? Lee actually did know this was coming and has been speaking out about it. But when leftists are kind of like clapping for people who are getting banned and deplatformed, I'm like, this is going to come for you. It's going to come for you when you step over the line. And now Google and YouTube are somehow the arbiter of what we get to see. And it's it just talks down to everybody's ability to make up their own mind and take in information and take in different points of view. And it also these this is very like Putin-esque behavior. Mm-hmm. Why are we behaving like Russia? It's crazy to mm-hmm. me. I just all this stuff makes me so unsettled. The the level of power that these corporations have. We've been joking for years on here about which tech archipelago we're going to end up in. And it's definitely happening. YouTube demonetized like all of the Russian influencers. Yep. And what's so even more crazy is that they were doing this during COVID and they were determining what they believed was true or false in terms of information that was allowed to get out there. And then they put this out recently. They said, our community guidelines prohibit content denying, minimalizing, or trivializing well-documented violent events. We are now removing content about Russia's invasion in Ukraine that violates this policy. And then meanwhile, you have Facebook saying that you can have, they were allowing last week, like, calls for violence against Russians, which they, and now they're the arbiter of who gets to be violent or not, which is insane. And then... While you have YouTube saying this, we're we're not going to allow this. The actual United States government is meeting with TikTok influencers and briefing them about what they should be talking about in regards to Ukraine. It's so crazy. Per Taylor Lorenz was writing about this, National Security Council staffers and Jen Psaki ref- briefed TikTok influencers about the U.S.'s strategic go- goals in Ukraine and answered questions on distributing aid, working with NATO, and how the United States would react to a Russian use of nuclear weapons. You know, it's like, who has more influence? I can't be like, the government has all this influence when it's convenient, and then the big tech. I want small tech and small government. And I don't know who's really influencing who here. You know, is are, how do I know? Is YouTube just making up these policies, or is, are they in cahoots with, like, what's allowed Right, be, with, with the, the government. And why wouldn't I think that they are if they're meeting with freaking teenagers on TikTok? Right. Oren McIntyre on Twitter had a the point of YouTube banned thousands of videos and channels for sharing information that was eventually proven true because it disagreed with the official narrative Yeah, in regards to COVID. I mean, we've been talking about the approved narrative and how if you run afoul of it, you get banned off these platforms, and it really is chilling. It's so unsettling. That that kind of power, though, is really unsettling. To be able... Wasn't it Orwell or someone who's like, he who controls the media controls the world? It's that combined with the like financial backing systems that those two things in cahoots... I mean, even the way that, like, Russia is being isolated, the people of Russia are going to suffer. Again, the poors in Russia are going to suffer more than any of the oligarchs or the rich people. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones who are being, you know, lining up for cash. And they're the ones who are being cut off from the rest of the world. And that's, like, it's crazy watching just, like, this entire nation be isolated 
financially and all of the people inside of it. Yeah. It's fucking wi- it's right. wild. It's right. just... We think of Russia and like Putin and we're like, yeah, that's the bad guy. But it's like there are hundreds of millions of people being affected by this yeah. on the ground. Yeah. Who really, and many of them probably don't even agree with him as a leader. Right. Yeah, it's fucked up. <laughs> Is Russia like the Alex Jones <laughs> of the world, you know, <laughs> where it's like, oh, if they can do this to Alex Jones and de-person and de- and do it to Trump, like they could do it <laughs> to an entire nation. And we should probably be more unsettled globally by that kind of trend than anything. But I don't really actually know how you handle a situation Yeah, like I don't this. know what the other, what a, the other response is. Other than is. World War III. Right, because people are like, <laughs> oh, set up a no-fly zone and do, like, let's get involved. And it's like, well, yeah, that would lead to World War III war. and yeah. nuclear war. So is that what we really Russian want? Airplanes. Yeah, <laughs> I don't think people understand no-fly zone, what that actually means. Uh, They're like, the jets just won't fly over there and everyone will be holding hands and there will be world <laughs> peace. Yeah, it's up it's complicated clearly too complicated for three to four morons in a garage i'm not necessarily including luna in that oh yeah not include <laughs> she's part of this ragtag <laughs> misfit toys operation anyway we were we are off next week we love you i hope you all try and stay sane as best as you can <laughs> use some of our sponsors if you need help with your sanity yeah. <laughs> and we're getting into the point now with Bridget and the pregnancy where we're just not sure what's going to happen. So we're playing it by ear. But you know the, who's in charge now? The aim is to take Matilda. next week off and come back, but we will have to see how that goes. You know who's our showrunner now? <laughs> this tiny trash panda. <laughs> <laughs> this tiny little dumpster fire. <laughs> Uh, it's running the show. So, yes, we will do our best to do three more of the. Ow! Ow! She, she like heard me. She was she like, heard, "That's right." She talk- heard Dave call her trash panda and got outraged. You talking trash? <laughs> She's coming for Dave. We will cleanse your palate and soothe your soul with the internet is glorious. Oh my gosh! Something terrible just happened. Everyone's talking about it. What's our tragedy strategy? As brothers and sisters, we're in the same boat. I mean, mine has a wait staff and champagne, and you're in a lifeboat with oars, but. Fantasy News. Fantasy News. We had Monica Guzman on Watkins Welcome talking about her new book. Check out Watkins Welcome wherever you get your podcasts. Subscribe, comment, give us five million stars if you can. And we also have Dumpster Fires podcast too if you can't watch this and you want to listen to it. And even if you watch it, please download it, subscribe wherever you get your podcasts, tell your friends. Check out Geriatric Mommy. My blog on Substack, go to bridgetfetacy.substack.com and you can check out all kinds of content coming your way. We're on Rumble, as you know, if you're watching us on Rumble. You can subscribe to our locals right up here. Very easy and seamless if you're not watching us on Rumble, which is where you will find all of our video content first. You can go to fetacy.com and subscribe and get the unedited version of Dumpster Fire every Sunday and the ad-free version of Dumpster Fire every Monday if that's more your jam. Join the community. It's super fun. There's lots of great people in there and the workouts and all kinds of stuff. Thank you to our sponsors, Sheath, IP Vanish, BetterHelp, and Fume. We can't do this without our sponsors. They keep the lights on. They keep people like us getting paid. We are able to hire help, pay our writers a little bit. It feels great. So thank them. Uh, Thank you to our supporters and subscribers. Shop our merch at BridgetFetacy.com or get our woman hoodie while you can at SquidPrintDTG.com slash Fetacy dash shop. All of these links are below in the descriptions. Thank you, supporters, subscribers. Like, comment, tell your friends. You know the drill. Thank you, Andy Chandler. Thank you, Matt Monroe. Thank you, Better Fetacy. Thank you, Luna. Again, thank you, Dave. Again, hey. thank you, Maggie. Thank you, as Bridget. always. Thank you, Sammy Flaps and Folds, who is in the writers' room and will be back, hopefully for our next episode. Hooray! The return of the Flaps and the Folds. The return of the Flaps and Folds. Our numbers will skyrocket. <laughs> thank you, Mister Fetacy, and thank you, Matilda. Thank you, Zempro Audio, for the juicy mic. 
And go to ZenProAudio.com for all of your audio needs. Every dumpster fire is a miracle. It is. This has been your dumpster fire for the week of March 6th to March 12th. I'm Bridget Fettersy. Now make us rich! Woohoo! All of us! Let it rain!